Welcome to the Art of Healing podcast, the podcast that is dedicated to helping you connect with your mind, body, and spirit. This is Charlize, physician and Reiki master, and thank you so much for joining me. I would like to remind you that although I'm a physician, the information you receive in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. You can find my full disclaimer at my website, www.healingartshealthandwellness.com. If you like what you hear on this podcast, sign up for my weekly newsletter, check your show notes for more information and for the link to sign up. Thank you. Welcome back to the Art of Healing podcast. This is Charlize. In today's episode, I wanted to cover where you'd like to focus your energy as far as your energy body and your chakras and keeping a healthy and strong immune system. I created a pod call, po, uh, excuse me, a um, blog post that is on my website, um, which is Healing Arts, Health and Wellness. Um, Dot com, And um, I covered um, some of the aspects of your immune system and I approached it from both um, sort of an energy medicine and a, um, a traditional medicine approach. Um, so for a little bit more detail, you can definitely go there. But when we discuss the immune system in traditional or allopathic medicine, which is where my first training is, um, we usually think of our mechanical factors like our skin, respiratory system, and our digestive system, as well as the blood and what circulates through the blood that makes up the immune system. In terms of um, things that you can do now, today, and where to focus your energy, um, when I'm working with my patients um, that have not been sick, that have been feeling well, um, you know, one of their chief concerns is what am I going to do to stay healthy? Um, how do I try to stay healthy? So I think we're all pretty well expert in some of the um, basics, which is um, washing your hands. And um, you want to wash your hands. You know, the way I see it is if I see a sink, I probably want to wash my hands. That sink's probably a reminder that good hand hygiene is one of your best um, defenses against the ongoing pandemic and even future um, things like the flu virus, which we'll probably have to deal with, uh, which comes every year. Of course, the other basic you want to do is wear your face covering or your face protection. Um, you know, I have um, seen in many settings, um, you know, just casual settings like shopping and in at gatherings that people are, are sort of trying to divvy out or decide when they can take off their face mask, when they should keep it on. And general guideline, I think we want to all remember, is that um, the virus that we are working to prevent right now, which is the coronavirus, it spreads very easily. And it spreads very easily from individuals that may be infected and have very few symptoms. So what the face mask is helping us to do is if you are someone who maybe has the virus, but you're not sick for whatever reason, your body's fighting it, but you could still spread it. That face mask keeps you from breathing it out on others. And for everyone else, the face mask is somewhat of a shield that helps you from breathing in particles. So I think the general rule of thumb is that you probably want the face mask on when you're not in your home for the most part. And again, you know, this is very difficult and I have lots of people who are, you know, very tired of wearing masks. 
very tired of that suffocating feeling, but it really does serve a purpose. In terms of the energy body and how you want to conceptualize ways to stay healthy and strong, um, and you know, honestly, because of I'm a physician, I practice internal medicine. Um, I'll just say that probably if you're not much into energy medicine or if this topic doesn't ring true to you, definitely understand this may not be the podcast for you. But if you're someone who practices yoga, if you're a Reiki practitioner, if you do acupuncture, if you're or you receive those, you're into those kind of things. Um, here's my take on where you can focus your energy over the next few months to help keep you healthy and strong. Um, just as another layer of defense, in, a, in addition to your hand washing, your face mask, um, your healthy diet that's full of whole foods from organic sources. If you consume meat coming from the highest quality source you can, um, minimizing our excessive sugars, um, even understanding that as we're more stressed, we may crave those things, but um, you know, we want to keep our diet super healthy. Um, and supplements, which is an individual choice, which hopefully you're working with your physician, your nurse practitioner, your functional medicine doctor, your naturopath, you're working with someone who is expert in giving you recommendations for supplements that would work for you. In terms of the chakra system and the energy centers that relate the most to keeping your immune system, your defense system strong, um, the way I conceptualize it is the root chakra, the solar plexus chakra, and the heart chakra are chief among what's going to keep you nice and healthy. My personal preference is, of course, we want every energy center strong. So we want a nice, strong root. We want to feel rooted. We want to have nice, strong legs and good production of blood flow, which comes from the root. Um, we want to have a healthy uh, sacral chakra so that we can feel joy. We can laugh when it's appropriate. Um, we can eliminate when we need to and have nice, strong, healthy connections. We want a nice, strong solar plexus chakra so that we digest our food, we produce our personal heat, and we um, um, can feel strong as far as what we need to accomplish that day. Uh, strong heart chakra so that we can feel and share love. We have a nice open heart that can withstand loss, that can hold grief. Um, our throat chakra so that we can express ourselves nice and strong and breathe easily. And our higher chakras of our third eye and our um, um, our third eye chakra and our um, higher center, the one above our head, um, so that we have a nice connection to our higher selves and to our higher deity that we uh, feel attuned to. Um, so, of course, what's best is to have all of them be strong and daily have some sort of process that you can work on all of those, be it Reiki that you do on yourself. Um, if you receive Reiki on a regular basis from a practitioner, if you have the chance to meditate and or exercise or move your body in some way. Um, but if you have many demands on your time and you're simply not able to get to all of those, um, I feel that you can focus on um, three of the energy centers, um, the root, the solar plexus, and the heart chakra. Uh, so as far as using your root chakra to maintain your health, um, so the root chakra quartz is our first chakra. It's located deep in our pelvis. Um, it is thought to be the center of our rootedness, what keeps us here, what keeps us grounded, um, sometimes the root of the ego. Um, it governs the legs, the lower body, the lower back, or the, um, and then the organs that are associated are thought to be your, um, uh, the end of your digestive tract, the anus, the rectum, and some of the reproductive tract. So um, to keep a strong root chakra, my personal practice, um, which is pretty simple, um, if I'm not having a lot of time in my day uh, to do a full Reiki practice on myself, which um, can, you know, can be short, can take anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes, um, sometimes I'll just do Reiki just to my root chakra. 
Um, I will do that either by just placing my hands on my lower back for three minutes. Um, and then if there's, um, for some reason, maybe not time, or for instance, if I'm in my office seeing patients, I'm between patients, sometimes just placing my hands on either side of my hips, um, I'm able to feel the energy um, working there. Um, another way that I like to keep a nice strong root chakra, um, I'm exercise I have to recommend to patients is super important exercise. I've been honest about this for years. I don't like to exercise per se. I like to move, um, but I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to get on elliptical. Um, so I like to walk. So what works for me uh, during my day is, um, is I'm busy seeing patients, you know, get those patients seen I, you know, and try to be productive. And then during my lunch break, um, I feel better in a lot of the way my energy is made that I need to actually move at lunch rather than sit and eat. Um, so I found over the years that even if I have a short lunch break, I feel better by taking a brisk walk fast as I can go, trying to get my um, heart rate up, get a little bit out of breath, um, then return back to seeing my patients. Um, and then either just a small snack at lunch or if I can't eat lunch and then maybe eat a little bit throughout the day. Um, depending on your own personal practices, um, your root chakra, you can strengthen by doing um, you know, as many of the yoga poses that are standing focus on your root chakra. So that's like your warrior one, your warrior two, um, any of the, actually the forward bend motions sometimes can help with that as well. Um, a simple uh, yoga practice, which you can do anywhere, anytime is mountain pose. So where you just plant your feet firmly, you try to feel some nice traction in your feet, um, and you envision energy traveling up your legs, up to your body, and you attempt to keep a nice, strong, straight spine and keep your belly muscles contracted nicely so that um, they're supporting your spine, but not so much that you can't breathe deeply. And practicing some deep belly breaths in your uh, mountain pose um, can actually help to stabilize your root. The root chakra is thought to be where um, the production of blood is somewhat centered. And in allopathic medicine, we do know that some of the bone marrow in adults is located in the pelvic bones. Um, and then the root chakra just being our, our core, our existence and energy medicine is thought to be sort of that center. So if you have limited time, can't focus anywhere else, you definitely want to put your attention on the root. Um, the next place that I like to focus if I'm short on time is the solar plexus. And this one's actually uh, pretty easy. So solar plexus chakra is the, the seat of your digestion, your personal heat, your uh, motivation, it's where the stomach, the pancreas, um, some of the intestines is located. Um, and I believe it's also what governs the energy of the liver and the spleen. Um, and all of those actually play some role in your immune system. To um, feel good energy from your solar plexus, um, easiest way during your day, if you're really busy, is to take deep belly breaths. Um, I have the luxury of seeing patients, taking care of patients, observing someone's breath as they're talking to me. And um, I can quite often see when someone's chest breathing, so is taking rapid breaths just into their chest. And because they're breathing so shallow, they breathe more rapidly. And um, as I'm talking to my patients, I can often witness how a one thought can spiral into a full anxiety attack just from chest breathing for three to five minutes. So throughout your day, one of the things you want to do is if you're finding yourself caught up in several moments, meetings, running here and there, or, um, you know, a 2020 problem is if you're wearing your mask and you're starting to feel breathless from having the mask on your face, try to take a pause, try to inhale all the way into your stomach so that as you inhale, you protrude your stomach and then let the air into your chest. So it should be a pretty big, long breath. And then exhale just the opposite, where you exhale from your chest down to your belly. 
So one thing you'll notice once you take that, and, and we can even practice if you're listening to this podcast now, is you just take a big inhale through your mouth or nose into your stomach, in your chest, and then let it out through your chest, then your belly should start to sink. So taking these belly breaths automatically slows down your breath. And you slow down your breath, then your heart slows down, and then your blood vessels dilate, and then a lot of cool things happen, including your oxygen exchange improves, the uh, flow of blood improves to your brain and all of your organs. The most important thing is as you slow down that breath over the next few minutes, your brain starts to understand that you're not in so much stress and it will stop sending the stress signals to your adrenal glands and it'll help your adrenal glands stop making so much cortisol. And when you make less cortisol, that allows your immune system to work better. So solar plexus, just to focus on that, just deep belly breaths. You can repeat that as much as you need to, but preferably um, throughout your day, try to inhale really deeply into the stomach, very slowly, and then exhale. Um, then finally, um, the heart chakra um, and how you can focus energy there um, if you're short of time. And that one, um, one of the things you can do um, is just placing your hands on your heart. Um, that's a nice way to start the day by placing the hands on the heart and praying or placing the hands on the heart and meditating. Um some practices, some meditations, I notice will say place the right hand over the left or the left hand over the right. Uh, frankly, I don't have a preference. I think as long as you get your hands on your heart and as they're there, start to take those deep breaths. And if you find that your mind's rolling, reeling, a lot's going on, then simply turn your attention to what your hands feel over your heart. Just sense what your hands feel as you place them over your heart and you can take some deep breaths there or even if you're um, on a conference call and you feel safe enough that you can you know place your hands there without being watched um, place your hands or one hand over your heart and just let it stay there for a second so um, just you know simple practices doesn't have to be anything super complicated but um these are things that i do throughout the day um particularly as i'm dealing with patients and everyone's feeling more and more stress more and more anxiety depression grief and loss as we're in this pandemic that i feel pretty strongly that um in addition to all the other baseline things you can do having a few energy medicine practices that you can invoke immediately just in a snap So um, I hope this helps. Um, I thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, As I am creating, I'm hoping to get a little bit more savvy. This full disclosure, I'm a practicing physician. I'm a beginner at podcasting, beginner at blogging. So um, if you ever catch laughter, that's, you know, me laughing at myself. Um, I'll post a picture, but if you caught purring through this podcast, that's because my, uh, my engineer, is a cat and she's not very good at this. She tried to help me set up the microphone and she purred a lot, but we powered through. So again, thank you so much for listening. Um, next topic's going to be um, depression, which I'll be posting my blog and I'll be posting, um, then I'll be doing a podcast on it. And coming soon is going to be um, an online Reiki course that I am designing Um to be self-paced, something that you can do on your own, um, something where you can feel empowered, uh, some very real world things that you can do in addition to everything else to keep yourself healthy. There will be later uh, Reiki courses that you can keep yourself and your family healthy. And eventually I will also provide some training for anyone who is interested in doing Reiki professionally. So again, thank you so much for listening to The Art of Healing. I'll catch you guys soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.
thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Art of Healing podcast. Once again, this is Charlize. You can find out more about me at www.healingartshealthandwellness.com. Did you know I have a blog as well as online courses? Check your show notes to sign up for more information about Healing Arts Health and Wellness. Thank you. Please feel free to share this episode with your friends, family, and loved ones. 